In this lecture, we're going to continue to discuss thermodynamic models that are very useful for predicting solubility of small molecules in polymers. And in the last lecture, we went through a derivation, a detailed derivation of the Flory Huggins model to describe interaction of small molecules, thermodynamic interaction of small molecules with um, uh, long uh, polymer chains. <coughs> and in this uh, uh, follow-up lecture, <coughs> I'm going to uh, go over several variants of the Flory Huggins model that are meant to uh, take account of additional phenomena that are very important from a practical point of view. So the first extension that we'll talk about is the extension to crosslink systems. So um, the Flory Huggins model is often used to describe solubility of gases and liquids in uh, rubbery flexible polymers or <coughs> alternatively describe uh, solution thermodynamics of uh, uh, polymer solutions. However, in many soft flexible materials that are used in applications where membrane or barrier properties would be important, those polymers are often uh, covalently cross-linked. That is, there are covalent linkages between the polymer chains that help provide mechanical reinforcement and keep the uh, polymer from dissolving in the uh, solvent in which it might be exposed. For example, very hydrophilic polymers such as hydrogels need to be cross-linked to keep the polymer from simply dissolving in water. There are a couple of ways that covalent cross-links are introduced into uh, polymers. One <coughs> is to make a linear or uncross-linked polymer and then react it with a compound that covalently uh, bonds the chains together. The other way, uh, another major way of doing that is to uh, polymerize monomer with a cross-linker so that the cross-link or the network is formed as the, uh, as the polymer itself is formed. And a famous example of the first approach where uh, one takes already formed polymers and then adds a component that cross-links the polymer chains is the vulcanization of natural rubber, which was pioneered by uh, Charles Goodyear and forms the basis for uh, making uh, car tires today. And so uh, polyisoprene, as shown on the left-hand side of this uh, uh, chemical structure at the bottom, uh, is a... Uh, can be a soft, uh, gooey uh, plastic that certainly uh, could not be used for applications like uh, car tires. However, if you mix polyisoprene with sulfur and heat it up, the sulfur actually undergoes chemical reactions with some of the, um, some of the uh, bonds on neighboring polymer chains and actually stitches those polymer chains together into a giant uh, cross-linked uh, mass. And in doing so, it introduces covalent linkages between neighboring polymer chains and, and essentially binds them together. Another way to, uh, to approach this is to start with a mixture of monomers and uh, cross-linkers and polymerize them all together. And so monomers um, are shown here as PEG methyl uh, uh, ether acrylate. And uh, this uh, monomer through this double bond can undergo polymerization to form a linear polymer. Um, peg acrylate, <coughs> similarly, can undergo polymerization through this double bond via free radical processes to form a linear polymer chain. However, if these 
monomers are mixed with a similar monomer that has these double bond acrylate linkages on both ends of the polymer chain, now these double bonds can actually stitch together the uh, polymer chains and make a network structure. And that's shown schematically here uh, where the monomers, R1 would be either this uh, uh, PEG uh, methyl ether side group or the, um, the PEG uh, uh, acrylate uh, side group, uh, is reacted with the cross-linker PEG diacrylate under UV uh, photopolymerization and you form uh, polymer chains consisting primarily of these monomer units and every so often, depending on how much of the cross-linker is here, the uh, chains are cross-linked together and in this way you can make a three-dimensional uh, network out of these materials and take structures that would be, for example, um, entirely miscible with water and form a structure that swells in water but doesn't dissolve in water because the cross links limit the ability of the material to swell. And this ought to be a clue as to why we're interested in it from a membrane point of view if we're interested in trying to understand how the chemical structure of a polymer is related to the solubility of various components in that polymer then physical structures like cross links that limit solubility, for example, limiting water swelling in these hydrogels, uh, are of great importance to us. <clears throat> and so, in, in both of the, the cases, the uh, natural rubber uh, approach as well as the direct uh, polymerization approach, cross linking introduces additional constraints on the chain configuration and so we ought to just intuitively expect that it's going to change the entropy of mixing uh, of the polymer chains with small molecules and so um, after proposing what's now come to be known as the Flory Huggins uh, theory uh, shortly thereafter Flory and Rayner uh, extended that model to, um, to cross-linked uh, systems and you can see from the abstract that the model that Flory had in mind was one uh, that would uh, be a cross-link network such as what exists in uh, vulcanized rubber. And if you think back a little bit to the time period, 1943, uh, Paul Flory was working as part of what was a, uh, a massive effort in the U.S. <clears throat> to uh, develop synthetic rubber as part of the war effort. And so this uh, uh, these ideas were coming about in an environment where uh, he was doing polymer research uh, in the uh, uh, national defense trying to, to formulate uh, synthetic rubber. Um, all rubber at that time was made from uh, naturally occurring uh, polyisoprene that comes out of rubber trees in places like Indonesia and there was concern that uh, some of the uh, adversaries of the U.S. in World War II would cut off our supply to natural rubber and therefore cut off our ability to make uh, tank treads and, uh, and car tires and things like that. And so there was a, a strong effort to develop uh, synthetic rubber and, and Paul Flory was, was part of that effort, as, as were many others. <clears throat> and I put up just a, a section out of his uh, paper because I thought it was gave a very clear picture of how Flory envisioned a cross-linked uh, rubbery material to uh, what its what its structure was, and so he uh, says that a vulcanized or cross-linked rubber consists of a three-dimensional network composed of very long rubber molecules laterally attached to one another at occasional points along their links. The cross linkages may consist of primary valence bonds connecting the chains directly or of an intermediate group or atom such as sulfur which is bonded to each of the two chains. The precise nature of this cross linkage is relatively unimportant aside from the stipulation that it be of a permanent nature. And so you can see already uh, in the derivation <coughs> of the uh, Flory Huggins equation last time around that the uh, chemical nature of the polymer and solvent only entered 
the picture at the very end of the discussion uh, when uh, we discussed estimating the chi parameter in terms of calculating the statistical mechanics of how the entropy of mixing was uh, determined, uh, that information uh, was uh, simply not present or not relevant in, in, Flory's, uh, in Flory's picture. <coughs> and he goes on to say that uh, in the course of the cross-linking process, the original long polymer molecules uh, lose their identity and emerge as a single giant network uh, structure, the basic elements of which are the portions of uh, the molecules reaching from one cross link uh, to the next. So that's the distance between uh, distance between cross links. We come to come to call that. And so I think this gives an, an idea about how Flory uh, viewed the structure of a cross link polymer, and then that helps uh, inform his uh, his modeling approach. And so. Uh, there were uh, the, the model for uh, extending the Flory Huggins model to cross link systems was published in a series of two papers, um, one uh, which I've been quoting from just on the previous slide, and the other uh, which is important for us because it uh, gives the effect of cross linking on the swelling of uh, cross linked rubbers in, in uh, uh, solvents. And it goes on to say that the maximum degree of swelling of a network in contact with solvent can be related to the degree of cross-linking. So the, more, the higher is the degree of cross-linking, uh, the more constraints there are between the polymer chains that hold, uh, that hold them together, and the less swelling the, uh, the polymer uh, chain can, under, uh, can undergo. I won't uh, go through the detailed uh, derivation of the flory rayner model. It um, is outlined in Flory's book and also uh, in the uh, papers that are cited on the last couple of slides. Um, I will give the, the uh, final uh, results. And the, um, we'll start from the flory huggins model itself, which is shown here. In the limit where the polymer chains are long, this factor of 1 over x is typically taken to be 0. And so the more common way to see the Flory Huggins model, model written for linear chains is shown here. The Flory Rayner model, now accounting for cross linking, looks exactly like the Flory Huggins model at the beginning. So the log of the activity, thermodynamic activity of the uh, of the solvent that the polymer is in contact with is equal to the log of the volume fraction of the solvent plus 1 minus the volume fraction of solvent plus chi times 1 minus the volume fraction of solvent squared. And the effect of the cross links uh, enter in this term uh, which is underlined in red. And remember that uh, this will be uh, the enthalpic contribution to the free energy is given by this term with uh, chi uh, times 1 minus phi 1 squared. Every other term that appears in this expression is related to the delta S of mixing. And so the effect of the cross-linking is to change the delta S of mixing of the polymer segments and to, uh, uh, to constrain the ability of the, the polymer network to swell. Uh, there are a couple of new variables that appear in this cross-linking term. One is nu sub e, which is the number of uh, cross-links in the polymer sample. And V0 is the volume of the penetrant fr pre free polymer, or dry polymer. And so nu sub e over V0 is the number of cross-links per cc of dry polymer. And um, V1 is uh, then the uh, uh, molar volume. <coughs> of the um, molar volume of the, the penetrant. And so the, the flory rayner model for cross-link systems looks remarkably like uh, the flory huggins model, but with this extra term on that accounts for, that accounts for the, the cross-linking. This model now has two adjustable parameters. One is chi. The other is the cross-linking density, nu sub e over v0. And <clears throat> if you only have 
uh, swelling data, that is um, data of the type that the, uh, you have the uh, uh, volume fraction of solvent absorbed by a polymer as a function of solvent activity, uh, it can be very hard to get independent estimates of cross-linking density and chi by fitting this model to uh, those data. And the best situation that you can hope for is one where you have an independent measure of chi, for example, uh, from other studies or from, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, regular solution theory approach uh, of estimating chi based on solubility parameters, or an independent estimate of the cross-linking density. It turns out that in rubber elasticity theory, uh, there, is a, there are predictions of how the modulus, for example, of a rubbery polymer will depend upon uh, cross-linking density, and so this is one way to access the cross-linking density, uh, independent of uh, chi or independent of any data on uh, swelling of a polymer uh, by a uh, solvent. Now, we've already, in the last uh, uh, lecture, shown you data for butane solubility in polydimethyl siloxane. And uh, PDMS is always uh, cross-linked when it's used in any sort of membrane um, formulation. However, in the, the case of the data that I showed you, I only used the Flory Huggins model, that is the first uh, piece of this model, did not include any of the uh, cross-linked uh, density uh, terms. And the reason for this <coughs> is that um, when the volume fraction of penetrant absorbed by the polymer is low, that is when V1 uh, approaches, uh, uh, approaches zero, um, this term for the cross-link density typically gets to be very small uh, relative to these other terms. And so in systems that are uh, where, for example, you're dissolving a uh, gas into uh, a polymer at moderate pressure where the concentration of gas in the polymer is not too high, uh, these cross-linking terms don't really uh, have much of a bearing on the thermodynamic activity. The, uh, pardon me, and so uh, it's common in the literature to uh, typically uh, neglect the cross-linking term in those cases. On the other hand, if uh, the situation involves uh, polymers that swell very strongly, then uh, it is imperative to include uh, these terms as they may be the dominant terms that actually limit the penetrant uptake uh, in the polymer. So um, in developing the uh, flory rayner model, as we've seen earlier, Flory essentially envisioned uh, natural rubber as that's been vulcanized with sulfur as the uh, model system of interest. And so this would involve taking a solid uh, solvent-free polymer, um, mixing it with sulfur, and then basically cooking it, and it raising the temperature <coughs> to the point that the sulfur would undergo chemical reaction with the polymer to form the uh, crosslinks that we've shown uh, earlier. However, uh, one can also prepare uh, polymers, crosslink polymers directly in the presence of solvent. And so we looked at a system earlier, uh, this system of peg diacrylate, peg methyl ether acrylate, and peg acrylate. And these components can be mixed in essentially any proportion and polymerized directly to form a cross-link network. However, they're also very uh, hydrophilic. And so you can make a mixture of the cross-linker and one or more of the monomers in whatever proportion you want, uh, and dilute that mixture with solvent, for example, water, and form the polymerization, or bring about the polymerization uh, in the presence of water. And you might imagine that 
if you perform the polymerization uh, neat, that is with no uh, water present, or in the presence of water, that you could get very different structures of the resulting uh, network polymer. Uh, when there is solvent present, one tends to form uh, a lot of so-called wasted uh, loops or wasted cross links that don't go to uh, contribute to the uh, elastic strength of the network. And so uh, because this is a common uh, way of uh, making uh, polymers, then there's also an extension of the Flory Rayner model that was due to Professor uh, uh, Nicholas Peppas of our uh, department and uh, Ed Merrill. And uh, this uh, uh, extension to the Flory Rayner system uh, takes into account the effect where the cross linking occurs in the presence of a diluent. And what you'll find, uh, I, uh, I'll have the, the paper for you to, to read as part of your homework, but what you'll find is basically the terms inside the brackets here are modified to include the uh, uh, volume fraction of solvent in the uh, polymerization uh, mixture. And so adding, uh, uh, doing the polymerization in the presence of solvent does have a bearing on, uh, uh, on the uh, uh, entropy of mixing and therefore the final uh, thermodynamic properties of such mixtures, and uh, Professor Peppas uh, extended uh, the Flory Rayner model to account for that case. Um, and so the, the models that we've looked at so far, um, Flory Huggins, Flory Rayner, uh, Peppas Merrill, are all based on the assumption that the polymer and the uh, solvents or penetrants mix with no volume change. And uh, that's because these are lattice-based models and every lattice position has either a polymer segment or a solvent molecule. There are no open um, or empty uh, lattice positions in any of these uh, models. And so there are basic properties of polymers that uh, cannot be predicted by such models. For example, um, the uh, thermal expansion of polymers and polymer solutions with heat can't be predicted by any of these models because they don't allow uh, volume changes on mixing or, vo or volumetric properties of the polymer uh, to change. And <coughs> the um, fellow who, uh, who addressed this shortcoming is on our faculty in chemical engineering, and that's uh, Professor Isaac Sanchez. And Isaac, uh, starting from the Flory approach uh, derived a, uh, uh, an equation of state first for uh, low molecular weight fluids and then for um, polymer solvent systems that allowed for the um, polymer uh, solvent system to, uh, to expand by including empty lattice sites in the uh, uh, in the uh, lattice that acted uh, in terms of the statistical mechanics uh, like an additional component. Uh, so it would be in a sense like having uh, polymer uh, and uh, two solvents that were, uh, that, were, that were being mixed together where one of the solvents had, uh, had essentially, uh, uh, were essentially empty spaces in the, uh, uh, in the lattice. And so this is a, uh, a short excerpt from Sanchez, the sanchez lacombe paper that gives the uh, basis of the physical picture. And so it, it gives the total number of lattice sites for a binary mixture of polymer and empty sites as shown here. So this is, there's no solvent involved. This is just for pure polymer. And the polymer, there's N polymer chains and there have R segments or MERS long and so the total number of lattice sites was the total number of lattice sites occupied by the polymer chains uh, plus these uh, N0 empty sites which could uh, uh, be removed uh, by applying pressure for example or could increase in number as, as temperature changed. 
And if you read through the coordination um, information here, it is uh, exactly like what you would find in the uh, in the uh, Flory approach, and uh, except that uh, now with the presence of uh, empty lattice sites, uh, the uh, polymer can expand or contract with temperature and pressure, and in the presence of other components such as diluents and solvents, that is, you can have volume change on mixing, which is not uh, possible with the other uh, models we've just discussed. Um, the way you see the sanchez lacombe model is often expressed in terms of an equation of state, and uh, the, the common form of writing that is, is shown here. Uh, rho is the polymer density, T is temperature, P is pressure, um, R is the degree of polymerization, and uh, the tildes uh, above each of these symbols represents that they're normalized uh, values, and the um, temperature, uh, pressure, and a specific volume, that is one over the density, are all normalized relative to characteristic uh, parameters, T star, P star, V star, uh, that are related uh, uh, to uh, uh, basic uh, uh, energetic parameters, T stars uh, related to uh, the strength of attraction of uh, one uh, segment to another, and so on and so forth. I won't belabor this in, in detail, um, but just to say that these um, T star, P star, and V star can be calculated and, and uh, and derived from experimental data and are reported for a number uh, of different polymers. Um, the, the model was uh, extended to uh, polymer solutions uh, a bit later in 1978, and uh, uh, the abstract goes on to say that the, uh, uh, this lattice fluid theory that Sanchez had been working on it's used to calculate heats and volume of mixing, lower critical solution temperatures, and enthalpic and entropic contributions of chemical potential. Uh, and he's comparing with polyisobutylene systems uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this case. But one thing that can be done with the sanchez lacombe model that can't be done with the others is it can predict the temperature dependence of density, in this case of uh, just neat uh, polymers, and here are some of those characteristic parameters reported for a variety of uh, different polymers. But for the first time, you could, uh, you could uh, calculate the uh, effect of temperature and pressure on uh, density. And so that was a, a major breakthrough uh, in, this, uh, in this field. Um, later, this uh, model was extended to, uh, to be able to calculate um, the uh, equilibrium of a penetrant, like a gas, <coughs> sorbing into uh, a polymer. And this is one of many papers um, that do this. Uh, this is uh, um, reporting hydrocarbon and fluorocarbon solubility in uh, polydimethyl siloxane. And, uh, uh, comparing that with the uh, sanchez lacombe uh, model. And the way this uh, works is you have to have a, uh, an equation of state, uh, in our case for the gas phase, and we use the, uh, the Sanchez uh, equation of state for the gas phase and also for the uh, polymer phase. And that ensures that uh, the appropriate reference state chemical potentials in the gas phase and, and polymer phase are, uh, are properly uh, defined. And then the, uh, uh, we enforce in the equality of the uh, diluent chemical potential um, to that of the uh, polymer uh, chemical potential. And out of this comes, uh, once the uh, uh, once the parameter values have been uh, loaded up into this expression, is essentially a, uh, an, an iterative expression that gives the, uh, uh, the volume fraction of penetrant uh, in, dissolved in the polymer at a given pressure and uh, uh, temperature. And, so, <clears throat> and you can note that even in the Sanchez-Lacombe model, 
there are terms in here that look an awful lot like uh, terms that appear in the Flory Huggins model. If you call this grouping of terms chi, uh, then these first three terms here for the polymer chemical potential just look exactly uh, like what you would find in the, the Flory, Huggins, uh, Flory Huggins expression. <clears throat> the uh, uh, predictions and calculations of the uh, uptake of gas in, in silicone rubber, in this case methane, uh, concentration of methane in silicone rubber as a function of pressure is shown here. The experimental data are the, uh, are the black uh, dots. And there are a couple of uh, uh, different uh, uh, possibilities for estimating um, parameters for the sanchez lacombe uh, model. And uh, there is a, uh, a mixing rule for these parameters when, uh, uh, when you have two, two species that are, uh, that are coming together. So in this case, methane and uh, uh, methane and uh, uh, silicone rubber, uh, and uh, without belaboring uh, this point in, in great detail, uh, the uh, uh, mixing parameter that, uh, uh, that estimates the strength of interactions between uh, the penetrant and the polymer, the so-called P star 1, 2, is often taken to be a harmonic average of the uh, interaction parameters for the uh, for the solvent with itself and the polymer with itself. And this uh, effector psi out front is an empirical uh, adjustment parameter uh, to uh, enforce the experimental data to fit the theory. Uh, so in this case, uh, the baseline approximation in the sanchez lacombe model is that this uh, interaction parameter psi is equal to 1 and you see some deviation away from the experimental data. If you adjust that by a few percent, uh, you get essentially spot-on agreement with, uh, uh, with the experimental data both for uh, methane as well as perfluoromethane sorption into uh, uh, silicone rubber. And that's the um, end of this particular uh, lecture. I uh, I gave a rather long lecture on the Flory Huggins um, uh, model last time, and so I'm going to give a short lecture. I'm going to end this lecture here um, uh, so that uh, we'll have about a balanced uh, week's worth of lectures between this one and, and the previous one. So thank you for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you shortly.